I found an old program for the COM ports from 2008 and I hooked up the original TM271 because I kept on getting the error radio the wrong model and the new radio here is a TM Two eighty one. It's just the yet newer update. They're basically the same radio. So anyway, we're going to plug this one in and, and try to uh, to read the radio. I got to go to radio. starting to read it. This is uh, September 6, 2016. I've been fighting this for th three days now. And they even have on order a new COM port cable. But this is the old COM port cable. Let's see if it times out again. No, it didn't. It didn't time out again, and there's all my frequencies. Let's see if I can get in and look at some of the other stuff. Like there's first menu. Go to the second menu. There's my sign on with my name. Interesting. So the lesson learned here was this version is version two and it's only of those three radios. Have the 281. This is, a, I mean, the 271. The, this is for the 271. Okay. This is the new software programming for the Kenwood model TM271 and TM281 two-meter radio. 
what I wanted to show here is that this software can hold up to 200 frequencies. The software that Kenwood puts out and their COM port driver software really doesn't work and there's a bunch of reasons for that and I just wanted to show you that it was real easy to read frequencies that are already on your computer your radio and also you can make changes and edit you do not have to uh, save it to an Excel CVS file it's all ready to go you just make your changes save it on the computer and here's this here's our save file that we've already done a few updates to there's three of them here I just identify them by the two different radio systems the TM 271 and the uh, TM 281 there's a 271 radio and then the 281 radio point is very easy as compared to the previous videos of me fighting this for several days and uh, hope you find this of interest I'm liking this software quite a bit no tweaks no changes no special com port driver it does it all automatically from the internet you just have to have internet access Here's how simple the hookup is for the RT system cable and software. I think this is a six foot long cable. And where these Kenwoods, there are microphones for the Kenwood. There's one right here. It has all the fancy buttons on the front of it for Kenwood. It looks like a computer jack on the end that plugs into the front of the radio so let me show you how I plug this in how they tell you to plug it in you take your handy dandy little microchip USB cable it's USB to serial and you're gonna plug it in and the way I've got my uh, computer set up you're gonna hear it when I plug it in Welcome. So if I had not already downloaded the driver for this cable, it would start the, the uh, download right at this point in time. And the next thing I do is plug in the end of the adapter cable into the front of the radio. And this is a TM-271. Kenwood 2 meter. It's, uh, I purchased this in uh, 2011. Okay, I'm going to turn the radio on now. The radio's on. That was just the weather channel. And that's, that's it. All I need to do now is upload from the radio to the computer all the frequencies that are currently stored on this radio I use this radio not only for my uh, Salvation Army emergency uh, team communication I also use it to monitor uh, local fire uh, stations so it this has the ability to monitor I have an automatic monitor I have 108 frequencies programmed into it and it's scanning through those 108 frequencies right now and as it hears uh, uh, some activity on any of the frequencies it'll momentarily pause for about five to seven seconds and then it will continue on with its search for any activity that's going on and it's in the evening time it's 8 30 p.m local time and it's kind of dead that's a good thing on a this happens to be a Saturday night, uh, September 10th, 2016. So that's what I wanted to show us, how easy it is to, to uh, 
physically plug it in and you're not tethered by the original cable that you purchased from uh, Kenwood or Kenwood supplier or distributor and, and that cable is, is only just under three feet probably more like two feet this one I think is six six foot I just happen to have a, a USB port right here handy more convenient to me from where the computer is computers another two feet away in that direction so when I get through reading the radio frequencies and back into the computer I can make changes on the screen in the what you've already seen what the screen looks like and then I can save it and then I can download the information back to the radio here and it will write all those changes that I made to the to the radio so much easier than the original equipment manufacturer Kenwood and their supplier prolific on the on the chips okay so let me turn the radio off disconnect the cable I'm gonna pull the chip and my radio my computer will let me know I pulled the chip goodbye goodbye and that's that's it this company is uh, located in Colorado and I well, what I liked about their write-ups um, from other customers is that they made the statement they they're up to they made the statement that they're in the software cable com port chip business to program amateur radios uh, they're up now according to this latest advertisement they sent in the box 297 unique radio programs and USB cables that work and I was skeptical I really was uh, it is worth the price they're a little pricey they're a little more expensive than the original equipment manufacturers cable uh, but if you got to fight it for weeks and weeks upon end and trying to do all kinds of workarounds and one of the workarounds was simply install a, a a 2003 or a 2008 or older uh, com port driver software so that the the uh, chip inside this this ser uh, USB to serial connector can utilize it but you would have to uh, the way Microsoft is set up like Windows 10 and I think also with window Windows 7 this happens to be on a Windows 10 machine uh, is that every time you plug this cable into your USB port and then into your radio what it wants to do it goes up automatically and looks for any updates on the interweb and what it does is it loads in the software for the com port drivers communication port drivers that do not work so there is a workaround my workaround uh, was using for the TM 281 radio the radio I have here is a, a TM 271 a little bit earlier version that uh, is chirp and I use chirp on a couple of other Bofang uh, two meter handheld walkie-talkies and a, and a Yesu handheld walkie-talkies and that seems to work pretty pretty fine it's basic it's an open software it's free uh, it's called chirp and I like that as well however this is head and shoulders above them all the radio manufacturer is in the business to make radios this company is in the business to do programs that's what they call it systems and they have all kinds of radios covered that's what this uh, brochure is it's tons of radios that are covered like I said up to 279 so far to date so I'm pretty well satisfied with it hope you find this of interest